Hey there, guys. It is Thursday, and we are leading into week nine, and that means one thing. It means it's time for me to give you my picks for who's going to win each and every game this weekend. Let's get into it. Welcome back in, and it is time for us to break down week nine game by game. I'm going to give you my predictions for who is going to win each and every game. And then like normal, next Tuesday, Takeaway Tuesday, we will be breaking down the results, seeing how I did. Did I do good? Did I do bad? Uh, we finished out this last Takeaway Tuesday. I'm sitting at 16 and 13 overall. A winning record at this point. Way better than last week, so I gotta love it. But let's start breaking down this week's Week 9 NFL games. Right now with the Thursday night game. That is tonight. The Thursday night countdown is on. And it is Titans at Steelers. Uh, Steelers are, are the projected win uh, if you're doing like the over-unders. Um, I am going to concur with that. And I'm going to say Steelers are going to win. Uh, this all kind of is up in the air, as I did see today that uh, Will Levis is going to start for the Titans. Will Levis went off last week with four touchdowns in his uh, debut for that team. So there's a chance he lights a fire under them and they uh, they roll through Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, for that matter. But uh, I think that the Steelers still look a little bit more organized. Their quarterback situation obviously seems unsure as well with... Uh, Pickett being injured, and if Trubisky plays, it's going to be a rough day for them altogether. But I think the Steelers are going to take that one overall. Uh, on to game two, Rams at Packers, with Packers surprisingly favored. I always go with the boys. Go Pack Go. The Packers are going to win that one. Uh, the Rams look a little bit disheveled, too, just like we do. Not <clears throat> excuse me, not up to the normal uh, Rams standard. Uh it's at home. It's in the cold. Uh, nothing like football in the frozen tundra. The Packers are going to win that game. On to the next one. Dolphins at Chiefs. This one's actually technically the first of the Sunday games as it's like a 7.30 kickoff my time. It is going to take place in Germany. Dolphins at Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs are favored to win. Nah, nah. Give me those Dolphins. Uh, the Chiefs showed with the Broncos last week that they can look absolutely god-awful. Uh, they should have not gotten beat by the Broncos, in my opinion. They are outmatched altogether. I think that their inconsistency will stand out and that the Dolphins, who just seem to be rolling right now, are going to run all over them. Tyreek Hill, look for that guy to blow up against his old team, rub it in their face a little bit that he's no longer a Kansas City Chief. Again, Dolphins over Chiefs in my opinion. On to the next one, Vikings at Falcons. Give me those Falcons. The Falcons are favored to win that game as well. I think the Vikings year is just about over. Kirk Cousins obviously heading to uh, to IR for surgery on that torn Achilles. They pick up Josh Dobbs at the uh, at the trade deadline. I don't think he's going to be the guy to lead them into the postseason. The Falcons look beat up too, but I think the Falcons are going to take Minnesota in that showdown. Give me the Falcons over the Vikings. On to the next one. Cardinals at Browns. Uh, the Browns are going to absolutely decimate them. They're favored to win. I'm picking the Browns. Uh, their defense is going to hold up, I think, amazing against a just absolutely beat down Cardinals team. Josh Dobbs started for them last week. Like I just said, he's uh, he's playing in Minnesota this week. The trade deadline caught up to that. If Kyler Murray doesn't play there, essentially their third string will play. Uh, I think Kyler is going to show rust if he plays all together. Those Browns, that defense is going to hold up, and I think the Browns are going to win. It doesn't matter about the quarterback situation, if it's P.J. Walker, if it's Deshaun Watson. I know the Browns fans are itching for Deshaun to come back as he's getting paid like $250 million to play there. But uh, whether he plays or not, I think that Browns defense is going to absolutely clobber the Cardinals. Miles Garrett's going to roll all over them. Browns over Cardinals. On to the next one, uh, Commanders at Patriots. Patriots are favored to win, and I'm actually going to pick the Commanders. I like how Howell has been looking. He went off for four touchdowns last week. 
that uh, commander's defense stifled the tush push for the first time from the Eagles. I like the momentum that they got going on. It's going to be a little bit different, I think, this week with uh, Chase and Sweat or Chase Young and, and Montez Sweat going uh, other places at the trade deadline. So that defense is going to look a little different. But I still don't think that the Patriots have the whole package together. I think they should have made some moves at the deadline, including maybe housing out Mac Jones. But that did not happen, and I think that the Commanders are going to come through with the upset win on that one as the underdogs. Go Commanders on that one. Bears at Saints. Uh, give me the Saints. The Saints are favored to win that game as well. Both teams, to me, just still don't look uh, 100% by any stretch. But the Bears, disheveled as always, uh, are going to fall down to a, a Saints team that at least the offense seems to start having some momentum. Derek Carr needs to get it rolling. Michael Thomas needs to get back into that veteran mentality. And uh, if Alvin Kamara gets a hold of the ball, you know he's just going to absolutely roll over that defense. The Bears' defense is still ungodly bad. So I'm going Saints over Bears. Uh, on to the next one. It's going to be Seahawks at Ravens. The Ravens are favored. Uh, this one was a tough one for me to actually decide what I thought was going to happen. Uh, as much as I really want, I think, that, that upset win from the Seahawks, I'm going to actually pick the Ravens. I think the Ravens right now look like just the absolute total package. They're dominating uh, other teams' defenses. Lamar is in midseason form as they're getting ready to obviously push for the playoffs. Uh, I think it's going to be hard to get by them. If a team could possibly do it uh, in the mid-range, like the Seahawks definitely feel more mid to me than uh, a lot of the other teams. But I, the Seahawks, I think, have potential to beat the Ravens. But I'm going to go Ravens. I'm going to play the safe bet Ravens over Seahawks. Uh, Bucks at Texans. Both share a three and four record, and the Texans are favored. I have lost faith in the Texans after their uh, their just mind boggling loss to the zero and six Panthers last week. Uh, give me the Bucks. The Bucks are going to roll through. Baker, I still think is uh, kind of fitting into that system. He's finally right at home, and uh, they still got some really good weapons in Mike Evans. I think the Bucks are going to hold up and beat a a kind of aimless. Uh, Texans team. I still don't know what their what their identity is as a team, and I think that uh, they're going to fall short here to the Bucks this week. Colts at Panthers. The Panthers are one and six now. Uh, the Colts seem to be kind of trying to catch a rhythm, or at least they're finally making some forward strides. I'm going to go uh, Colts over Panthers. The Colts are also favored to win that game. Uh, if Minshew can can step in and, and look like a superstar, which is kind of hit or miss, if Jonathan Taylor can go off, if Michael Pittman can have a good day, I think that team outshines a, a just in the dust Panthers team. I think that their year is obviously in the books. Uh, let's see if the Colts can get a little bit of a tune up off of a game with a just weakened opponent altogether. On to the next one. Giants at Raiders. Raiders are favored to win. I have lost faith 100% in the Raiders this year. Give me those Giants. This is exactly why, because I know that that's going to catch some flack as the Giants look like hot garbage this year too. Uh, the Raiders are now cleaning up. They're cleaning house. Uh, fired McDaniels, fired their GM. They're benching Garoppolo. I, I think that they are going to look also just out of sorts. They've looked out of sorts the last couple weeks anyway with Devontae Adams wanting to uh, to pack up and go home and a lot of the other uh, players on that team being frustrated at the upper management and the decisions being made on the field. Uh, obviously, Garoppolo overshot Devontae Adams time and time again. He's still, in my opinion, the best receiver in the league, and he is getting shut down by his own team. I think that the Giants are making forward progress. I don't know what their quarterback situation looks like. If they're third string, this could possibly be just an awful game to watch. Uh, but if Tyrod plays for any reason, I have more faith in Tyrod than I do in a no-name starter for the Raiders. Give me the Giants for the upset. If Saquon can go off, I think it'll change the entire aspect of that game. That Raiders defense looks like hot garbage, and the Lions exploited it last week for sure. On to the next one. It is Cowboys at Eagles. 
Uh, Eagles are favored. It's not by a ton, but the Eagles are favored. Give me those Cowboys, though. This is the week that we figure out whether or not the Cowboys are a legitimate push for, for the postseason or if they're a one-hit wonder having these sporadically good ball games. They looked really good last week, putting up a bunch of points. They didn't even need to dip into Tony Pollard's bag of tricks a whole lot. The pass game got it all done between Dak and CeeDee Lamb. This this is the make or break, in my opinion, of, of the Cowboys season. If they can hold up against this team, they can hold up against any team. I think that they will be able to pull it out as they seem to be a very well-rounded weapon. The Eagles still are kind of a one-trick pony, in my opinion. They're obviously winning games, but we kind of know what to expect out of the Eagles right now. Jalen Hurts hasn't been looking as good, but A.J. Brown is going to keep rolling as good as he has ever at this point. Uh, I've heard conversation about A.J. Brown possibly being in the MVP conversation. Uh, obviously, it's a quarterback's award, so hats off to him if he can get it. But uh, I think this is the Cowboys' week to prove if they're a postseason threat or not. And with that being said, give me them Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are going to beat the Eagles this week in Philadelphia. On to the Sunday night game. It is Bills at Bengals, the showdown between Josh Allen and Joe Burrow. Uh, the Bengals are favored to win, and give me those Bengals. The Bengals are going to beat the Buffalo Bills. Finally, Joe Burrow is off of whatever weird calf injury he had. He's heating up Jamar Chase. T. Higgins is still on that team, even though it looked like he was going to get uh, shelled out at the trade deadline. Joe Mixon's starting to roll. I think altogether... They are a much more disciplined and organized team than the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen still has that trigger-happy mentality where he will just throw balls down the field and uh, kind of spray and pray that his, uh, his team is going to be the ones who catch that ball. It doesn't always happen. Josh puts up a lot of turnovers. Uh, Stefan has been kind of up and down this season. They do have some secret weapons. Uh, the, their tight end from last week, their rookie, making a, a hell of an impact. I don't know about Dawson Knox uh, status this week. They just brought in Leonard Fournette right before the trade deadline off of free agency, uh, which is going to kind of split up their backfield more because I know, you know Cook was taking a lot of uh, – um, a lot of carries for them. Murray was taking a lot of carries away from Cook. And now we're going to have Leonard Fournette, who looks absolutely incredible. Uh, he's always going to put up yards. He's not. I don't think he's going to be the deep yard threat that he used to be, especially when he played for Jacksonville. But he is going to put up yards for this team if he gets a, a good amount of carries. He's going to split their backfield. I think... The Bengals, like I said, just look way more disciplined, way more organized, and way more tuned now to start making that push at the midway point to get those playoff spots. And with teams like the Chiefs, who normally dominate the AFC, looking like hot garbage over the last couple weeks, this is the Bengals' shot, I think, to solidify that they are a postseason threat in the AFC. Give me the Bengals over the Bills. <clears throat> Uh, on to the Monday night game. It could be a absolute bust of a game, or it could be an absolute throwdown. Only time will tell, but Chargers at Jets. Monday night football, Aaron Rodgers will be there. The Chargers are favored to win. I'm going to go with the Jets, though, and let me tell you why. Because now, week in and week out, Aaron Rodgers is looking better he's looking healthier it's looking like the rehab is working at a remarkably fast pace putting him way way closer to returning to the field than i think anybody expected six weeks seven weeks off of uh you know achilles surgery i think that we're gonna get crappy football from the jets but it doesn't matter how it looks if they keep putting up dubs and if they put up dubs Aaron Rodgers has way more of a chance of coming back and being able to push this team into the postseason. I think they have a fire under them right now to keep that team rolling so that they can see their franchise quarterback come in and do the damage heading into the postseason. We all know Rodgers can do it. Let's just see how long it takes to get him back. The Chargers still look good, though. Herbert still looks good. Keenan Allen looks great. Austin Eckler is finally firing up. I think this is going to be a tough primetime game for the Jets to win, but give me those Jets because I think they know what is at the end of this road and what's at the end of this road is getting the guy back that Hard Knocks was all about and what they've built their team 
around at this point, and that's getting Aaron Rodgers to put the ball into Garrett Wilson's hands. Sauce Gardner is running their defense right now. They're looking good. The defense looks way better than I think most people kind of expected them to look. I think this is, again, one of those make-or-break games where the, if the Jets can hold up now, it down the pipe, they're going to start to look better and better. And it, the games don't have to be pretty. They just have to put dubs on the board. The Giants game is a good example of that. They beat the Giants by three in overtime. Game was hot garbage. Doesn't matter how you do it. The Super Bowl can be hot garbage, but a dub is a dub. That's how you get there. That's how you win the championships is just by putting dubs on the board. I think the Jets have the fire. They have the momentum. They have the drive because they know what's at the end, and the end is Aaron Rodgers. Give me those Jets to end this week's slate of games. All right, y'all. Well, we are going to get out of here and get ready for Thursday night football tonight. Again, that's going to be Titans at Steelers with Will Levis uh, taking the helm for the second week in a row for the Titans. I think that's going to be a really fun game to watch. Uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. As always, uh, if you could, just drop a, drop a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Tell your friends. Share this around to all of your uh, fellow football fans. And then next week, Takeaway Tuesday, we'll see how I did, see how you guys did with your predictions, and we'll see what my record will be at the end of week nine. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you later.